All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are going to be talking about everything to do with Railjack 3.0. Uh, in terms of all the system changes, what I think of it so far, and just kind of the whole deal uh, all wrapped up. And for that, first, we're going to talk about the inside of the Railjack in terms of uh, the changes that have been made to the layout. Uh, and spoiler alert, they're better, or the layout is better than it was previously. So the front of the Railjack looks pretty similar. We've got our pilot seat, we've got the navigation, we got the artillery seat. This is all pretty much what you're used to. But basically everything else is different. Uh, starting with this midsection area, uh, it is shrunken down and on the sides, there are no longer gunnery spots. The gunnery spots now go down and up. Uh, so they are above and below the ship. This change is very good because A, it makes it make more sense that you have 360 uh gunning whenever you have that upgrade from the gunnery tree uh and it's in line with the pilot so it's a lot less weird to be in the gunnery seat you don't really feel like super disjointed how you would uh likely feel before then you just have the regular exit to the rail track here in the back we have also a great deal of change uh the area back here would be like doors and this whole big area to get towards where the reliquary drive is um, that is no longer here. It is now just open, and it just sits back there. Uh, up top is pretty similar, but smaller, uh, in that this is where the Railjack slingshot is at. That still remains up there. Uh, and then down below, we have probably the biggest change, and that's that this is the cargo hold. Just straight off. There's no big uh, area between. You just go down the ramp straight into the cargo hold, which is very, very nice and makes the forge a lot more accessible. And it also just condenses this area to a point where if you get boarded you're going to get to the enemies very quickly and be able to eliminate them and get back to piloting or gunning or engineering or whatever the task you were trying to complete before the boarding happened so that's all very very good i think this layout is a huge improvement to the railjack now let's get and talk to or talk about some system changes at the dry dock so here we have much the same over here in the components uh the shield array basically identical to how it was uh the vidar engines are just the engines in general rather i think there has been some speed adjustments here but otherwise i think they're identical uh and then we have plating which is brand new so plating will determine your hull and armor stats this is no longer tied to your avionics this is just straight up a piece that you equip this is one of the things that is going to be railjack specific so it is still a good point of progression to make your frail check harder to kill. I will say this 6,000 hull is the highest number I've seen so far, although I do have different kinds of plating that have more armor. It's just the distribution. I don't know what the max hull um, and max armor values are that you can see on any given piece yet, uh, but I, I think 6,000 is probably the max hull. I don't know that for sure, though. We also have this, this Z key that is a little bit more hull and less armor and all these types of distributions what's best will probably be figured out relatively quickly uh, but I have not looked in too much on what those maximums are yet otherwise we also have reactors so reactors were previously absolutely necessary for equipping your avionics now they're absolutely necessary for an entirely different reason uh, and that is that these will change the stats for your battle mods so in this case I have this Z key reactor and this gives me plus 60 percent strength plus 25 percent range and then the little bonus on it uh others just have different ones this is plus 60 percent range plus 40 percent duration uh, and so on and so forth those are the only two types of reactors i happen to have on hand right now so i can't show the levon ones but this plus 60 percent strength and plus 25 percent range has been doing very very well for me uh, having these essentially be like one big mod for your real jacks abilities i think is really nice and does not make them required but makes them still very very good so that's great uh, overall very happy with the stuff that is here moving on we have armaments so the new weapons i've not gotten to test too too much but they seem fun uh and otherwise everything here remains exactly identical to what you would have seen before in the upgrade section however everything is different now i have heard a lot of people complaining that you now have to form a your railjack and i gotta say i don't get it i don't get it at all 
on this screen, uh, I have leveled my Plexus twice. It's level 30 right now, which is what mods your whole Railjack. And this is uh, the same between you joining other people's games and getting on their Railjack and all that business. So you're going to have these buffs no matter where you go, which is nice. Um, but the only Forma I've put into this was an Aura Forma into the Aura slot. And that gives me seven additional points, which as you can see, I'm not using right now. For that, that means that this entire full build, because this comes with three polarities, you can put into your Railjack with no Forma whatsoever. And I'll be honest, of the mods that I have right now, this this is the build I run. Like, I don't want to put a different mod into any of these slots, really. Like, I don't need Cruising Speed. I don't need Warhead. Forward Artillery, like, is maybe slightly helpful. Maybe a little bit, but it's not really a priority for me at all. Uh, the stuff that I've chosen to go with that is, like, basically required is Hyper Strike, Predator, and Section Density, which are all upgrades to your turret damage. Other things on here, I have the uh, Revolite Consumption down, which is kind of nice, I guess. Uh, quick Lock, which makes my Ordnance lock on fast, which is pretty whatever. Uh, and then Ion Burn and Conic Nozzle just make the Railjack faster, as I feel like the Railjack is like maybe slightly more sluggish now than it was before, which is kind of weird because Stamina is gone and I'm boosting all the time. Uh, so I've been using Ion Burn and Conic Nozzle to kind of get myself a little bit more speed. Uh, and then I have Artillery Cheap Shot in here, uh, which is mostly just really nice while you're leveling your Railjack because you get less of the dome charges whenever your Railjack is at lower levels. So having that 60% chance to not consume those means you can just keep firing it and keep destroying um, the different like freighter ships or whatnot. So that's very nice to have. I will say this is, this is just a, a nice convenience mod, obviously not necessary. And then in terms of aura stuff, uh, right now I'm running Onslaught Matrix, which just makes my turrets do more damage and gives my battle mods efficiency, which is all very nice. Doing more damage, obviously the thing that you want to be doing in Railjack, just be able to clear the enemies faster. However, because no one is going to have plating if you just started interacting with this system, I would really advise you go with the Ironclad Matrix to get a little bit more hull and armor and max shields and shield regen for that little bit of extra survivability if you're just going to be jumping straight in to the Tier 3 missions in order to start getting your tier three plating to put onto your railjack. If you're going to be going for that, I would really highly advise Ironclad Matrix as it is a significant boost uh, to your defensive stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's really nice and much advised. Other than that, uh, we have the battle mods, which this basically just functions as it is before. You have your defensive ones, you have your offensive ones, and you have your supers. They each have their own particular slot. So you're choosing one in any given slot and then you have that ability. This is all to be expected. I will say something that was a bit unexpected. Uh, I am enjoying Seeker Volley way, 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 way more than I am liking Void Hole. That might be because I don't have a Levon Reactor for the stats that Void Hole wants. But Void Hole was also nerfed with this patch, and Seeker Volley has been excellent. And it's especially excellent uh, whenever. You know, we'll, we'll go over that later. But just keep in mind that there's a particular reason why Seeker Volley is excellent that I'll get to. Other than that, though, yeah, like Tether if you want to. Uh, Tether's been nerfed, but I think is still good. Uh, and then Munitions Vortex or Blackout Pulse or any of that business is available here. Tactical, much the same. Uh, you have Void Cloak, Death Blossom, Form Up, all that stuff. Uh, I will say there's a number of things that you like have to you have to get your crew all together for. So just forcing everyone together or it's like forcing everyone to end a mission can be kind of nice in this slot. Um, but otherwise, like, you know, you have like just heal everyone instead of like forcing everyone back to the rail check and healing them. Uh, freeze the boarding parties. Death Blossom, I think, is a fantastic thing here. But also battle stations is an option. Like removing turret cooldowns is like not as crazy now. Um, but it's still very nice, and yeah, there, there's an argument for battle stations that are like just going either way you want with it. Uh, and then also, of course, Death Blossom is going to be really nice before you get to rank nine gunnery, which a lot of people aren't going to be there. Uh, and then you're super in this. I've really liked Void Cloak just for the extra safety uh, with the crew now, which we're going to get to in a moment. This is not as necessary, but just being able to make your ship invisible and then go do your own thing is still very, very nice. Um, and you can just hit L at any time and be like, your railjack's in trouble. No, it's not. It's invisible. And that's very good as well. That stuff, uh, I like it. I like the whole thing. I just, I think this is a much better way to handle customization of the Railjack. Seems good. Obviously, I think with the couple of mods that I don't have yet that are quite expensive to put into a build, I think I'll end up 
at like probably a four form of build for my rail check but that's fine like it might be three forma but like three or four that's less forma than usually a secondary weapon takes and for that to be your investment for the whole of the railjack system I, I i personally am very okay with that i i think it's kind of ridiculous to complain about adding forma to the system it just seems seems real silly to me um but yeah feel free to let me know in the comments why i might be wrong about that but it, it seems very like a very strange thought that people are, are having in that way moving on though uh we have intrinsics so uh intrinsics we're going to talk about like pretty quickly here i'm not going to dwell on too much except for gunnery rank 10. uh and basically uh tactical is still very good uh join warp is amazing what a fantastic rank 10. uh everyone should be immediately going for recall warp as it is also incredibly useful just warping in general very very good uh and rank 5 uh, deploying necromex in all railjack missions this is going to be necessary for the orfix game mode but by the time you're up into like the the void or fixing uh you're probably going to have rank 5 tactical it's almost certainly going to happen so i wouldn't worry about it too much uh, and then as for piloting uh these are all really good there's some ch changes here uh that are basically because there's no stamina now there are some adjustments made there uh, i will talk about railjack blink which is brand new uh you double tap whatever button you set it to uh to instantly blink and it's the same as the arc wing blink essentially uh weird thing about this i like it for the most part uh in terms of backing up and like going left and right with the blink it's very very useful but it feels really really underwhelming whenever you blink forward it feels like you really don't get that travel distance that you would want for blinking forward and i'd really like to see just the forward blinking be increased in distance as i think for like maneuvering in combat the left right and back distances are all good but specifically forward i really wish it was more of a really getting to your destination type movement as opposed to the the shorter distance that it is right now uh, otherwise I like the stuff that's in here I will say on rank 7 the necromech haste this movement speed bonus is a lot more like important and impactful rather uh than I gave it credit for whenever it was in preview having actually tested it it is actually it, it's much more it's much more of a speed increase than you might think and the necromechs feel quite fast with this and like their uh, usual movement speed uh modding that is on them gunnery now gunnery has some changes in here but there's two big ones that are worth talking about that's rank 9 which is flush heat sinks reloading when weapons are overheated will cool the weapons to zero in 0.5 seconds this skill incredibly incredibly good what a good skill basically gives you at the maximum of 0.5 seconds on any overheat on any weapon cool immediately followed by rank 10 reflex aim turret aim will snap to lead indicators for three seconds but the turret overheats 20 percent faster I don't comprehend why this comes with a downside at all this rank nine makes cooling your weapons way way better why would all of the farming that it takes to get from rank one all the way up to rank nine doing that entire intrinsics farm again why would all of that go into getting the turret aim snapping and making your overheat worse because all that this ends up doing is once you're at once you're going to rank 10 you're giving yourself 20 percent less clip essentially in all of your weapons and getting that snap to lead indicator because this 0.5 seconds is like the maximum time you're going to have overheated weapons for so it just becomes a determining on how much clip you have to fire so with that I understand that for console players the turret aim snapping to lead indicators and stuff like on a controller that's more convenient I still think for you you should not have a downside for this rank 10 and it's absurd that there is one but I will not be upgrading to, to rank 10 gunnery ever I have there's no there's no reason to take the downside whenever you can on PC at the very least just aim at the enemies and shoot them there's just no reason to take that downside ever and I think it's atrocious that any rank of any of this would have a downside uh it's just like the mistakes that were made in the focus system with the operators where there are upgrades in quotation marks on that tree where it's like you get a little bit of lightning damage but spend seven more energy a second or something along those lines it just doesn't feel like an upgrade it kind of feels ridiculous to have an upgrade that's not absolutely outrageous with such a downside like what would reflex aim need to be in order for me to take more overheat 
oh right it would need to be like literal complete auto aim and like guaranteed hits on targets like for me to take a downside like it needs to be absurdly powerful otherwise like i'll just aim bro is the answer to whether or not you should rank this to 10. however that means that if you were on 10 10 10 10 before now you're at uh 10 10 9 10 9 so woohoo you have all of the command tree uh going over engineering real quickly this is basically identical I like the engineering tree it's fine it's good command however we'll go through all of these uh we have first crew member being unlocked to rank one then you get one competency point to give them then you get a second crew member and then you get another competency point then you get a third crew member and then you get a competency point and then you get competency retraining which allows you to redistribute your points that you've given to people and then you get rank eight which lets you use liches available only as defender crew on your rail check which we'll get to in a moment uh and then you have on call which allows you to assign a crew member to be on call and join you on non railjack missions now this tree is boring it really feels like this tree says base functionality for the first seven ranks um and I think for the first two ranks that's fine I think you know like these first two ranks are very easy to get so getting one crew member and then getting a competency point for that crew member is like oh okay cool rank one and rank two here we go that's fine but then like rank three rank three through rank six should be squished to be like at rank three you get your second and third rank four you get two more competency points and then having more interesting things at ranks five and six would be much preferred uh even like buffs like the arc wing buffs and stuff that's available in other trees would feel way more impactful uh, or just buffs for those crew members in general even small things like plus 15 percent movement speed uh would feel a lot better than like just the same rewards for the first six ranks and then on rank seven which is not like the other ranks allowing you to redistribute your previously assigned points this really feels like just base system functionality and I I really don't know why this isn't base system functionality and having like something that, that feels a little bit more impactful here uh and then as for rank eight having this be like a high level thing for for the liches I think is fine but I think it's problematic that the liches are only defender crew on the railjack which we'll get into more detail on that in a moment on call I think is fine I think this is this is this is fine like being able to call one of your crew members in that's cool I think that's fine and then also a thing that I'd like to point out I've seen like a lot of people like calling DE like lazy and like haha it's unfinished on not including rank 10 which is labeled here as coming soon but D have literally stated that the reason that they're not releasing rank 10 is that they want to see people's reactions to the command tree and how people are using their crew members and stuff before they add in a big probably pretty bomby rank 10 and like I think that's totally fine I don't I don't think there's any problem with that I think that's probably smart and good <laughs> like I, I think that's absolutely within reason and I think it's very strange for anyone to be like saying that they just didn't finish the system or something whenever it's like very much on purpose and makes sense from like a design standpoint of them wanting rank 10 to be very good and I think from that perspective and that reasoning that, that they've given that they want rank 10 to be good it makes even less sense that rank 10 of gunnery is like this so that's uh, the last we're going to talk about these intrinsics overall I like command we're gonna get into why now so command basically you get a crew to replace teammates whenever you don't have teammates to play railjack with so this makes it a much more soloable friendly content and I like this system so so much so my general setup is I bring two gunners and I bring an engineer and these guys are great I think the uh cost to get them from ticker is totally reasonable you get them forever and as you can see they're very highly customizable you can put armor on them you can change the color of their suits and everything you can put a Sindana on them like you can get that whole level of customization uh in terms of like the training and stuff they start with certain skills and then you plus skills up on them uh so in in the case of this character I have like maxed out gunnery on them and then also like a good bit of repair so they can switch to uh, an engineering role should they need to because all of them can switch in mission to any of the other available roles uh and then 
we have you know our engineer here who's going to be fixing the ship and everything like that and so far having used these characters that I, that do have specialties like this is a five gunner uh, and then dell is five gunner and five piloting uh, and then engineer is five repair um and four endurance is just for survivability of my engineer whenever boardings happen and stuff like that um the engineer has been absolutely excellent fantastic goes through your ship repairs your ship does engineer things good stuff exactly what you want this character to do otherwise the gunners if you're if there are five gunners they're pretty accurate they help you take out other ships like it's good stuff the major problem i have with gunners is that they cannot use the artillery seat to shoot at the large ships that need to be shot with artillery shots that is really really unfortunate i would really like for them to be able to use that seat and even if like they don't do anything while they're in it just being able to have the pilot while they're in that seat kind of aim for them and shoot when needed to kind of uh make it more fluid for you to use that artillery cannon while you're still piloting something along those lines if it's possible to have that would be really really much appreciated as that's still the one kind of iffy thing in solo is having to switch to the artillery cannon all the time because you're the only one that can do that but otherwise i think the gunners do a really good job other roles for piloting it's been pretty wonky for me the pilots uh haven't really like they get in the seat and they just kind of don't go anywhere a lot of the times for me i don't know if they like only engage enemies or if they won't fly to objectives or like what's going on with that but it seems like piloting for them is kind of weird and i haven't had much success with it overall so that's disheartening uh and then the final role is defender so now defender is notably the only role that you can give your lich and that is the only role that they can do as well so liches have no railjack training and so cannot man complex systems but they excel as defenders so there's a lot that you don't get here like obviously they have a ton of shields and health they're very tough but you also can't switch out their weapon you kind of just have to choose a lich that has the weapon that you want them to have and you also don't get to mod their weapon like you get to mod the weapons of your other crewmates so they're usually going to have a much less effective weapon and they're going to be beefy boys but them being super beefy and hard to take down is honestly more of like an engineering stat line based on what I've seen so far. Uh, and it's very, very strange to me that they're not like at least also engineering uh, or just giving giving the liches something else to do. Like may maybe each lich also comes with like a buff that it gives to your ship. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Something else for the liches to do feels like it'd be good because in the middle of a mission, I can be like, okay, I'm going to have Dell go pilot the ship, and that's going to be a thing. Oh, this engineer, we, we got boarded. I can switch this engineer to be a defender, and then he can take this ogress and go fuck some dudes up. And that works out. Like, that's good stuff to have happening. But the Lich, I just get no versatility whatsoever. And, like, they look cool, but that's really all it seems like that they're bringing to the table. And I can make my other crewmates look cool because I can customize their colors and give them the armor that I want and stuff. And you also can't do that with the liches. So they feel really underwhelming as part of your railjet crew. I would love there to be some solution for, or like real, like more of a reason to use them that is actually like a, of more benefit. Like maybe they give a passive where like, hey, them just being a defender will, will passively repair the ship or like you get health regen or, or, or just just some subset of things to do that would maybe not only make me go farm more liches potentially for these special railjack bonuses that I can acquire but also just give value to having a lich on board period maybe they can do two rolls at once one of your turrets becomes automatic while this lich is on the uh <laughs> is on the ship defending like just stuff stuff like that would be really helpful I think to making them more of a thing Overall, though, I think that the crew stuff really makes it a much more enjoyable experience to solo, uh, specifically, of course, having the engineer. And of note, I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure on this, that these crew members are replaced left to right. So if you're putting your crew members together, always put your engineer on the far right because they will be the last person replaced for your ship. And what I mean by that is as players join in you get less crew members so i think if i'm in a squad of three i won't get vam or dell but gale will still be on the ship so he can do the engineering role and all the other players can just use the guns and things and do that stuff which is generally going to be more efficient uh but yeah 
overall big fan of the crew system i think it's at the very least a, an awesome start for this even if it does have the few problems that i've outlined uh already moving on uh let's talk about piloting and missions and all that business because with the reactors being changed and everything uh we now have a completely different energy economy for the railjack that is very very much worth discussing so railjacks now use your warframes energy economy so in the case of lavos who we have here all of the abilities of your railjack work on a cooldown so that's really really important because i think lavos is probably the best pilot of any given warframe because the cooldowns for the abilities of the railjack are short and he's not subject to one of the systems that has been uh in place here which is the escalating cost of abilities for other warframes he always just has the same cooldown and you can use the ability when it's off cooldown the escalating cost is a thing that makes it so that hildren is not the de facto best pilot i've used hildren for piloting with all the shield mods and because of the escalating cost you can spam out like three supers all at once and that's really cool for hildren but the problem that happens is that you escalate your cost so high by doing that you escalate it up to like six thousand shields per cast and once you're at that point it's so slow to decay you might as well not have that ability for the rest of the mission because the decay is so slow on going back down to its original uh cost so hildren basically has a cooldown that is longer than lavos is but that you can burst out at the start of a mission if someday that becomes important maybe that'll be a use for hildren in real jack uh but as it stands right now she actually felt really not useful to me at all on the flip side uh using protea or honestly any warframe that you have subsumed uh protea's dispenser ability onto felt great so the dispenser has been fantastic uh, alongside Zenerik for just giving me enough energy to like just be constantly using my abilities and stuff and while I do have to respect the um escalating costs so that I do not overpay for my abilities so there's like a kind of pseudo cooldown there um I think that it, it works and is good however if you're someone that does not have a Protea a subsumed Protea or Zenerik and like you're very like you're much newer to the game and you just don't have these ways to get energy yet the advice legitimately is to get Lavos or get Hildren in order to make that a little bit more manageable for you in order to be using these abilities. Of course, on your regular Warframes, you can go to the back of the ship and craft more energy for your Warframe, but that takes more time than you're probably going to want to spend as a pilot and is maybe more of a solution if you're going to be in a gunner position where you can be off the gun for a second. And it's probably not going to be affecting you in any large way and you'll just teleport back and teleport uh, back to your gunner seat. So yeah that stuff was a pretty surprising to me to find out that the guy with cooldowns is maybe the best pilot overall um and the big thing that you can do with lavos is if you have multiple lavoses in a party you can put a lavos in the pilot seat you can put a lavos in the artillery seat you can put a lavos in the one the gunner seat one and gunner seat two and once you have four lavoses all of you with seeker volley you can start up one of the grenier missions to exterminate all the ships and you are just a hornet's nest of missiles at all times because you all have individual cooldowns and it is just you are just going to fucking town obliterating everything that appears in space with missiles you are an episode of macross you are doing gundam shit it is a lot of damage and it's a very very impressive to look at um very very flashy way to play so I love that that's great you very much could not do anything of that variety in the previous system and it feels very very good moving on let's talk about the missions in the new areas so I have not gone through and done all of like the, the new missions on Pluto uh or Neptune or any of that business um but I have gone through all of the new veil missions which are of course like the higher difficulty ones so I've done all of these and experienced all that uh multiple times and farmed out some new tier three parts etc etc so we have Calabash which is exterminate railjack we have volatile which is a new game mode and then we have 
Defense Railjack, and we have Orphix Railjack, and then we have another Volatile ra Railjack. So, big note here. These, ugh, how do I put this? These Railjack missions that are also like an Exterminate and are also a Defense, and this one that's also the Orphix mission type, I feel like they don't accomplish what it, it seems like they should. For these missions, it seems like you should have like someone doing defense and like also needing to do railjack and like kind of going back and forth on this type of mission where like you you must enter this ship and defend this for for five waves and then you're going to go back to your railjack and you're going to do these objectives and then you're going to need to head back to the defense objective and do another five waves and like get the rewards back and forth that way or something of that nature uh, and that would feel like really integrated with Railjack overall and probably really good. But a couple things kind of bog that down. And that's that that's not how this works at all. All this is is like a very, very short little snippet of Railjack gameplay, which is fun and I do like. And then you just go onto the ship and it's a defense mission. It's just a defense mission. It's a defense mission on like one of the worst defense tiles in the entire game. And welcome to defense. Uh, it has railjack rewards, so you're gonna get railjack parts and stuff from it. Uh, and then, yeah, that's that's kind of the whole thing. And it's really, really disappointing. And part of that is because for me personally, I don't like defense, especially on none of the bad tiles that have been put in the game with the Jupiter rework and the Corpus ship rework and all that business that makes defense even more of a fucking slog to play. Not a fan. The Railjack part of this mission, the part that's actually Railjack, I like a lot. But the defense part is completely separated out and just not good. And similar things can be said for Calabash, where you do a bunch of Railjack stuff, and then you just go do a regular exterminate. It's not, like, combined in any way. Like, it's not that you need to exterminate these targets while the Railjack crew is exterminating these other targets. It's you do the railjack part and then you do the exterminate part. Very, very separated. And it's a really, really strange choice. Obviously, Orphix is only here, but it works the same way. You do the railjack part and then you go do the Orphix bit. And the Orphix mission is really, really fun. It feels like it's been tightened up in a number of ways. We're going to talk about the rewards of it in a moment. But other stuff, uh, the volatile mission type, this is the one that feels the most like... A combined mission and even this could probably do with a, a little bit more doing both at once feel uh, in that this mission is uh, kind of a it's like a meter management defense where you need to like be like you need to remove valves and stuff to keep heat in line while you're defending this area and making sure the engineers don't get to the consoles and stuff and it's like a very very active constantly moving around and doing things mission once you're in the ship that I like a lot and then when you get out of the ship you need to get into the railjack and use your artillery gun to blow up the reactors that you've identified being in certain places and blow up the ship overall. And before you get onto the ship, you have to like destroy some freighters and stuff. And there's some side objectives and things, and that's all cool and good. I like the volatile mission type. I think it's very, very fun. But it still does feel a little disconnected where once you board the ship to do the volatile portion of it, the railjack just fades away into the background, and I think it even like probably despawns, which is... Very, very strange to not even, like, have to go back and, like, defend it or any of that type of business you'd expect to be more well integrated. Also, another thing that's strange is that Skirmish is not available for Corpus missions, as far as I can tell. At the very least, not in the Veil Proxima, and that's all that we have over here is Skirmish missions. So, the Grenier do Skirmishes, and then the Corpus do the other new mission types to Railjack, which feels like a very strange choice. Instead of having, like, Lu Yan be a skirmish with the Corpus and having like, all these mission types be different, which would feel like a very nice variety while going through them, two of the missions are the same at slightly different levels um, and all that kind of business. But mainly, my main criticism here is that I don't think doing this solves the problem of Railjack not being integrated with the main game of Warframe. Because I've come to realize something, and it's that it's not that you want to do Railjack and then just do defense. 
It's that in order to really combine Railjack and regular Warframe, it's that you need to just be doing Railjack things and then find a ship that like offers you the opportunity to do a defense. Or like you find a ship that offers you the opportunity to do an Orphix or to do an Exterminate for some specific high quality rewards. Like just flying around and having it be like procedurally generated, which is what we're normally used to in the level structure of Warframe. Having the Railjack just procedurally generate out and like just move between areas and like just start doing objectives and start getting rewards, start doing things and then happening to run into defense and orphix and exterminate would be a lot more rewarding on its own if the missions that you're finding give good enough rewards in order to justify you going out there and getting them randomly in order to have the chance to do them to get them because their reward structure is very good. But even beyond that, even though you know what you're getting whenever you go into this mission, I think knowing what you're getting in this it makes it even less appealing in that you know you're going to get in here and you're going to go to the defense mission and you're going to get railjack parts probably for your rotation a's and b's and there's some other stuff on c and you're going to get a bunch of railjack stuff and maybe some axes here and there uh and you're going to get these rewards that are not demonstrably better than rewards that you'd get for not playing railjack the rewards that you're going to get here that are going to be unique and have a different kind of value are all Railjack rewards. So you're getting rewards from the not playing Railjack part that makes your playing Railjack part better, and that's a really strange place to be in. The, the place where there might be value in having in coming back to this repeatedly is Orphix, because on Rotation C you have Arcanes, but the drop rates, which I'll show on screen here, uh, are such that like they're so low and you need 21 of any given arcane in order to make a set of them that it's a little dire uh, and even though it feels like orphix has been sped up a little bit it still feels pretty rough overall in terms of trying to get the things that you want and i think that they need to introduce some system to railjack to have like an overarching reward much like we have with steel path now Steel Path now has long-term consistent value, at least in my opinion, because the dailies that they're providing you with are giving you the Steel Essence to get the rewards from the shop. And like the Relic Packs have value, Umbral Forma has value. Um, a lot of people like to get like the Kuva that you can get from that shop and things. Like there's different things that are like cons like consistent rewards over time that you're going to get just for interacting with the Steel Path period through its daily system and with those specific rewards that you can shoot for. Here, you have a lot of rewards that are only Railjack. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I get the Railjack rewards here for my Railjack. And then once you've built up your Railjack and you have, like, your Tier 3 stuff rocking around, am I supposed to do any of this? Because, like, when the new Prime Access comes out, am I going to do any of these missions? No, because none of them are, like, a target farm for the new Axie Relics that I really want. Like, they're, they don't have, like, a, a much higher chance to give me the things that I need. Um, and like, I'm not going to come here for endo because there are other missions that are faster because it's like, you didn't jack up the endo rewards. It's not like I can go to this like sentient specific mission and like have the caches give me a ton of endo be like, Oh, I'm going to get like two to three caches a mission and two to three caches equals two to 3000 endo. That would be a really compelling farm. Um, but it's just not that way. There's not those compelling farms in here that we could consistently come back to and feel rewarded for. It's really just like a go through it once type thing. My railjack is upgraded. Therefore, I will now go to the regular Warframe. And it makes this feel really sectioned off just because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of value in investing a lot of time here because you're not going to get the regular types of rewards out. Um, but yeah, overall, in terms of like mission variety and stuff, I mean, part of this is that I just don't like defense. I like the Orphix mission. It's good. Orphix is fun. Um... I just wish, weirdly, weirdly, very strangely, I wish there was more Railjack in it because, like, the Railjack stuff is very, very fun and enjoyable. And going back to these skirmishes and stuff, it's way more fun than it used to be. And as of, like, the last big round of changes, I thought that the gameplay in Railjack was pretty fun. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just really that the rewards aren't there for long-term appeal, I think. And I think that's a, a thing that needs to be assessed. And I think it's totally valid if they just add another shop that works just like the Steel Essence shop that gives me Railjack tokens that have a variety of good rewards I may or may not want to be shooting for. I That's totally valid. And then it's like, well, if I play Railjack long term because I like it, 
I get these rewards. Or I can play Steel Path long term because I like it. And I can get very similar rewards. And it's kind of a choice between what you want to do. I think there's value in that. Um, but as it stands right now, I think it's a pretty tough decision to say whether or not you like investing in Railjack is a good idea and like a good use of your time unless you just like to play it and for me personally i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna complete all the things i'm gonna get my ship fully upgraded because i'm enjoying the gameplay of playing the railjack stuff um but yeah it, it's just i think uh i i'd like to be able to come back to it when a prime access releases or for whenever i need to farm for a mod or something along those lines and right now it just feels like it wouldn't be a good idea to do that stuff so i think the the drop tables and or overarching reward system of railcheck probably needs to adjust and change uh to add value there otherwise i think it'll kind of go back to being what it was right before this update which is a thing that existed that no one played because the rewards weren't good enough but yeah that's my thoughts on railjack stuff overall i think it's really fun i think the new crew system is really good and i think there are still a number of problems that definitely need to be addressed maybe those problems will be addressed in the tempestari update maybe void storms will bring about this whole big new thing that we're going to be constantly coming back to i would love to see that uh but as of right now that stuff isn't here uh hopefully it'll get there hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video i am going to be streaming tonight over on twitch.tv slash brozyme link to that is in the description below if you want to come hang out there or ask questions or discuss what i've talked about today um but yeah i'll see you later goodbye everybody.